Hello everybody, hope you're all well. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to a brand new video. As you can see, I am not in the UK. I am on holiday. I'm in Lanzarote enjoying some winter sunshine. And whilst I was here, I thought it would be fun to do a bit of a travel and holiday chat with you. So I went onto my Instagram and I asked if you have any holiday or travel related questions, if you want any suggestions for some inspiration for the year ahead, if you have any special occasions coming up, that sort of thing and I've got all the questions here so I thought we would just sit in the car and answer some of these and have a little catch up whilst I'm here on holiday. I've got a long vloggy vlog coming for you on Sunday so that's to look forward to. Do make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that one. In that video I'm going to be taking you around the all-inclusive resort that I'm staying in in Lanzarote and also showing you a day trip that I go on and it's a lot of fun. I was hoping that this video would have blue skies in the background to give you all of the blue sky holiday vibes but as you can see today here on the island is a little bit of a overcast day and it's quite windy so I thought I would do this video from the good old Fiat 500 hire car. So we're sat in here with a coffee and I'm going to get straight in to all your questions. So we'll have a quick sip. I'm just gonna start, I'll start at the beginning and work my way through them. And also it'd be great if you can add to my suggestions in the comments so that we can all inspire each other for some exciting travels for the year ahead. So grab yourself a drink as well, have a quick sip and we'll get into this. So, oh, that's a nice coffee. I got that out of the machine at the buffet. It's lovely little Cortado. I pressed it twice, so it's quite a big one. So first of all, top tips to have a top cruise. What to look for in a cruise are drinks packages, value for money. So my top tips for having a top cruise, I guess my first tip would be to really do your research. And for a cruise, think about the countries that you would like to visit. I think would be a great starting point. Maybe think of some destinations that you wouldn't visit on a normal holiday, as in like a, you know, a week long break or a weekend city break. And think about some places that you might like to go for a day trip, just to see what they're like and how that could work for you. Maybe you're not somebody who particularly enjoys going around tourist destinations or new countries, and you're more interested in the cruise onboard experience. In that case, maybe look for a cruise that has lots of sea days so you can really utilise those days on the boat when you're out at sea. And you might also want to think about the weather and the time of year you're going. If you're somebody that loves hot holidays, then you could think about maybe going, you know, more into the summertime if you're going in Europe. Um, or if it's wintertime, you might want to be heading down to the Canaries like I have done for this trip. Or you might want to go down to the Caribbean. So, yeah, I would start off by thinking where you want to go, what, what um, countries you'd like to visit on your cruise. And then once you've decided on that, I would think about the cruise ship and if it is suitable for you. So maybe think about the kind of activities that it has on board, if it's family friendly. I mean, I think all cruise ships are family friendly, but some are probably more catered towards kids than others. So I think it's just do your research. There's so many videos on YouTube for every cruise that I've been on. I've, lo I've watched lots of vlogs that have really detailed descriptions of all different parts of the cruise. So things like the entertainment, things like the food available, things like the excursions that you can book in advance. And I guess the other thing to think about is your budget as well, because obviously the price of a cruise can really vary as well. So happy cruise planning. Do let me know in the comments where you end up going if you book one. And yeah, what to look for in a ship? Well, I would maybe think about particularly the cabin that you're staying in and what you want from that. I have just tested out, you might have seen a cabin on the MSC Eurebia. If you missed that vlog, I will link that in the description for you. I did actually book an interior cabin, um, an inside one with no windows because it was a short trip and I thought that would be absolutely fine. I ended up being upgraded, so as you'll see in the video. Um, but yeah, have a think about what cabin you want to stay in. And are drinks packages value for money? I think if you're drinking a lot and you're going to drink every day, 
So if that's your vibe for your holiday, they probably are. But if you're wanting to have alcohol-free days or you're just having, you know, a couple of drinks in the evening, then they're probably not value for money. So it's worth doing that maths before you book one because the thing with the drinks package is that you have to have the same drinks package for everybody in your cabin. So if you're going with your friend or your partner or a relative and you're in the same cabin together and one of you doesn't drink alcohol and one of you does, if one of you wants to book the drinks package, the other person has to book it as well. So it can make it double expensive. Um, so in that situation, if there's one of you that doesn't drink alcohol, I think even more reason not to get a drinks package and maybe, or maybe get a soft drinks, pa soft drinks package. <laughs> and then you could just buy the alcoholic drinks as and when you go. And also some ships will let you take alcohol on and others are stricter and they won't. But the ones that do let you take alcohol on, I think you can definitely take on like a bottle of wine or a bottle of fizz. Some will let you take on a bottle of spirit. So it might work out much cheaper to do it that way if you're somebody that just drinks gin and tonic, for example, and you're happy to have a G&T in your cabin, then I think that would probably be a much better value option, to be honest with you. You could pick up a bottle at the duty free. Um, so the next one, another cruise related question, but we will go on to some more general holiday related questions. Um, this one is what was the age ranges on the Queen Mary 2 when you went? We are going in July this year. Oh my goodness, July will be amazing. It'd be so nice to experience the Queen Mary with the sun shining. So I hope you have a fab holiday. The age ranges, I would say it's definitely, I felt like I was one of the younger people on board. I mean, I did see, did I see some kids? I think I did, but very few. And yeah, I didn't see loads of young adults, to be honest with you. The majority of the adults on board, I would say, were probably in their plus years. Um, so yeah, the age range, I mean, if the full age range would probably be from very little. I think maybe, you know, um, primary school age that I saw up until phew, probably past 100 to be honest with you <laughs> I think it I think it has got all the age ranges on there but do you know what it's not stuffy at all it's not you know I think the Queen Mary has got a reputation for being maybe quite posh and quite I mean, traditional and that sort of thing but it's not stuffy at all so you'll have a really relaxed holiday I don't know how old you are um, or why you're asking that but yeah um, you'll have a great time regardless um, an affordable hotel in London I get asked this question a lot I would have a look on booking.com I feel like they're quite good at the moment because you can cancel on booking.com usually up till quite near the time of your trip and then what you can do, if you book it well in advance, if you know when you're going already, um, it doesn't say when you're going here, but you can book it now and then keep an eye on the prices and then nearer the time if the price has dropped or if you find a better deal somewhere, then you can cancel it and even rebook it with them if the price has gone down a bit. So I would definitely um, have a look on there. In terms of specific hotels, there's the Premier Inns and the Travel Lodges where you can get some really good deals in London and some of the locations are really good. And then there's also a Premier Inn that's like a mini Premier Inn, isn't there, that's centrally located. There's a few of them too. I think it's called Hub. I might be wrong, but have a look. It's Premier Inn, but like small version. And also the Point A hotels. I've stayed in those before. They've got some really good locations. They're also, I've stayed in one in Edinburgh as well. Was it Edinburgh? I think it was Edinburgh. Um, and yeah, really like them. They're kind of really well designed for a compact space. And the other thing you could have a look at is maybe Airbnb as well. If you wanted to maybe stay out of central London in one of the kind of like the London villages, maybe you want to stay in somewhere like Hampstead or Greenwich or anywhere like that, you know, that is a little bit further out, but you want that kind of London villagey feel, it might be worth having a look on Airbnb. Um, so mature couple holiday, in Greece suggestions please so I have never been to Greece so I'm going to be completely honest with you I do not have um, suggestions for this one but I know that there will be people watching this who do so please answer 
this question in the comments if you can help us out with that one. Mature couple holiday in Greece suggestions, please. So someone else is looking for a city break for two adults and a one-year-old for September time. Any inspiration, please? So for a city break, two adults and a one-year-old for September. So September is a lovely time to go away. I notice that the prices always drop after the school holidays. For a city break, two adults with a one-year-old, I'm thinking short flight and I'm thinking September sunshine. And I think with a one-year-old, it'd be quite nice to be quite near to the airport where you're staying just for ease. So I'm gonna suggest Nice for you because it is a very easy flight and I feel like it's got quite a nice chilled family friendly vibe there. I remember seeing lots of babies around and I feel like with that nice short distance from the airport, you'd have the city there, but also the beach and some lovely September sun. So I hope that helps, but any other suggestions are welcome and have a fab holiday. That sounds really nice. Um, September, I think is just such a nice time to go away. What is the biggest stress for you during a holiday? The biggest stress? I think the big, any stresses for me would be the same stresses that I would probably have day to day. I feel like with holiday for me, I kind of treat my holidays as, how do you explain this? As just a continuation of my life, <laughs> which sounds ridiculous, I know. But what I mean by that is when I go on holiday, I am often still working. I'm still, a lot of people are kind of very much, they go on holiday and they want that total switch off, out of office, no emails, you know, all that kind of stuff. Just read a book, don't continue with the day to day. But for me personally, I find it more stressful to do that, to then be sort of bombarded with loads of emails when I return or not having dealt with things. So what I do is manage my time when I'm on holiday. So I will allocate a little bit of time here and there and not much at all. Um, so for example, on this holiday, when I get up in the mornings, I have not been checking my phone. My phone has been in a separate room in the apartment. I haven't really been on it much, but what I have been doing is allowing a bit of time, usually kind of like late in the afternoon before I go for dinner, just have a little look through, sort my emails out, um, check any social media that I need to do, kind of like respond to comments, that sort of thing. So have I gone off on a tangent here? Probably. <laughs> but the biggest stress for me on holiday, I don't know. I, I generally find traveling quite stress-free. And I feel like that is because I guess I've done quite a lot of it and I like to do my research. And also I, I'm very used to chopping and changing, going with the flow, waiting around. I think it's a lot to do with the jobs that I've done over the years, um, but I'm quite flexible and I just really enjoy traveling as a whole. I enjoy the traveling experience. So I enjoy looking around at the airport. I enjoy being on an aeroplane. I enjoy being on a boat. I enjoy being on a whatever. <laughs> I enjoy everything to do with traveling pretty much. So in terms of stresses, I don't know, you know, if something, what can be stressful is if something goes wrong at home, you know, you can't be there to fix it immediately. That can be stressful, can't it? So for example, you know, if you were away and you had a burst pipe or something like that. So it's just being organized and making sure that you've got things in place so that if those sort of things do happen, you've got it covered and you've got kind of a plan of action as to what you want to do. I don't know if I answered that question at all. I think I just went off on a tangent there. Um, the next one is, where are you cruising? We are going on our first cruise around Greece this year. Well, I have got a European cruise booked for later in the year, which I will share details with you soon. I will do kind of like a video about where I'm going, what I'm doing, what I've got planned for that one. Um, so I'll do that in a separate video. Make sure you're subscribed. Stay tuned for that, but have a fab cruise around Greece. And I'm wondering now, thinking back to that other question, whether for a mature couple holiday in Greece, that could be the way to go. Maybe you fly out to Greece 
and then get yourself on a little cruise around Greece and do a bit of island hopping. Maybe that could be um, what you do for your holiday. Um, so next up, would love a budget-ish idea for a city break abroad for my 20th wedding anniversary in July. Oh my goodness, congratulations on your 20th wedding anniversary. So with it being July and wanting budget-ish, hmm. With it being July, I'm thinking, first of all, school holidays. I generally avoid going away in July, so I haven't been to a lot of places in July, but I'm wanting you to go somewhere that's not gonna be jam-packed with crowds. So typically for like a wedding anniversary, I'd probably be thinking of places maybe like Venice, something like that, um, something really kind of romantic. But because of, I think that would be so busy at that time of year, I would suggest, I think maybe somewhere like Lake Como could be a vibe. I think it would probably be relatively busy in July, but I don't see it being as busy as your Barcelona's, your Venice, these kind of places. So I would maybe think about, is it just gone dark? Oh, you want to see the sky though, don't you? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I would have a little look at like a top 10 places to go in July that aren't too touristy and maybe go somewhere beautiful maybe go somewhere in the italian hills or go to a lake go to somewhere like lake como if you like that sort of thing i think it'd be so stunning in july in that kind of summer sun yeah i'm feeling for a wedding anniversary i'm feeling that kind of away from a really touristy place maybe valencia as well i think that could be a vibe instead of Barcelona. I think wherever you look at, maybe don't go to like the main city, maybe think about the sort of the next one down or the next smaller one or somewhere, somewhere chill for July. <laughs> um, any tips on where I can take my husband for his 40th? I want to go away for it. I love that. I love the fact that you just decided that you want to go away for the husband's 40th. That sort of thing I would do. <laughs> so, oh, for a 40th. I think for a 40th, I don't know what time of year you're going. That's the only thing. So I think for a 40th, I think a city break would be a good option. Or a city slash beach break. So you could go to somewhere like Barcelona. I think any cities that are kind of cultural and also have nice food and maybe a beach nearby would be a good vibe so that's why i'm thinking barcelona for a birthday you could also go to somewhere for a husband you could go to somewhere maybe quite close as well maybe go to somewhere like amsterdam or one of the um smaller places near to amsterdam they're really nice you could go to maybe maybe somewhere a bit smaller if you didn't want it to be too busy for a 40th. Also, I think Gibraltar, which I vlogged recently, would make a really good birthday trip away. It's really easy to get to. You could stay on the boat like I did. That vlog will be linked in the description box. Um, I had a great time. And yeah, I think that would be a really fun, kind of interesting and sunny um, birthday, depending on what time of year you go. But I think it's pretty much always sunny there. So hope you have a fab time and have a birthday to your husband for when you go. Which app do you use to find good accommodation with pets? Which app? I don't, I haven't really looked in terms of going away with pets, but I would probably suggest starting with Airbnb. I think mean, that's an obvious one, isn't it? Um, in terms of going away with pets. A lot of places on Airbnb are pet friendly. I have heard, I think it's Travel Lodge that now do, I think you can take your dog with Travel Lodge, if you wanted to just have a night away or a couple of nights away in a budget friendly, kind of know what you're getting kind of hotel. But also I would look at booking.com as well now, just with what I said before about that cancellation policy, I feel like they would be a good place to look at. But I know there's also some websites that are specifically for, I'm not sure what pet you've got, but I'm guessing it's a dog probably. Um, and there is some sites that are for dog owners specifically for traveling around the UK, that is in staycations, that sort of thing. 
Um, so I hope that helps, um, but I'm probably not the best expert on that one. So please take us to Dublin. Well, yeah, I would love to go to Dublin and maybe, um, maybe I will get that sorted. I'll see if Dainty fancies um, showing me around Dublin and maybe we'll do that. We can go and see Dainty Diaries. Um, so next up, how to pack for different types of trips, beach, cruise, etc. I think I have done a few packing videos over the years. I'm thinking how to pack for different types of trips. I think the best thing to do is start with your packing lists. And you can Google this and maybe it's something that I should actually put together and share. I have suggested doing that in the past and didn't get around to it. But start with your packing lists and then think what are your essentials that you'd need to take on any trip. And then it's kind of adding things on for or actually taking things away for different types of trips. So you've got beach here. Beach is, it's quite a straightforward one for me, but the thing that I typically forget when I'm going on a beach holiday, first of all, is a beach bag. On this trip, I've ended up having to buy this ridiculous bag <laughs> from the shop. You'll see it in the vlog on Sunday. And yeah, I mean, when you see my beach bag, you'll see why it's probably a good idea to bring your own. But, you know, when I say a beach bag, I just mean a tote bag. I mean a fabric bag that you can just roll up and shove your stuff in or a backpack, you know, like a little backpack. But some that's the one thing that I sometimes forget because I've got my suitcase and then I've maybe got like a leather backpack for the flight or something like that. And it's just not right for just throwing your beach towel in and a bottle of water and your bag of lays and your sunscreen and your sunglasses headphones at a push that's probably it isn't it book and and you know sliders on down to the beach you go you don't want a big leather bag or a hold all or something so i do often forget that so that's something for your list the other thing i would suggest you do with your list is keep them with your passport so if you've handwritten them and you've done it for one holiday or you've got your generic kind of city break list keep them with your passport so wherever you keep your passport, whether it's in a little folder, in a little, you know, document case, whatever it is, keep your lists to hand there, along with any other bits and pieces that you might need, like your earplugs and your padlocks and your travel sickness tablets, any of that kind of stuff. You can make yourself a little travel box, get yourself organised, and that is where your lists should live. Of course, you can also have them on your phone, in the notes app. I have actually got some lists in here. So I've got like previous holidays. Sometimes I just go back into those and I just change the title to Lanzarote when it was Tenerife from last year. So you could do that too. Um, da, da, da. Got lost now. Hmm. What has been your favourite excursion so far and where do you hope to go in the future? Oh my goodness. Favourite excursion so far? I've, I've got so many favourites. I've travelled so many different types of places that it's hard to choose favourites. I really enjoyed travelling around Japan. That was incredible. I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed a holiday to Barbados. I really loved swimming with the turtles and going out on a boat there. That was amazing. It was so relaxed. Um, and I love my city breaks. I love New York. Where do I go, hope to go to in the future? I'm just hoping to continue exploring lots of new places. Um, places that I haven't been to before. Where would I like to go that I haven't been to? I don't know, there's so many places on my list. Um, am I going anywhere new this year so far? I don't think I am. But I will be experiencing some new things. So yeah, I will be vlogging everything, of course. Um, a trip away for someone who loves history. Ooh, that's a that's a good one. I mean, there's so many places, isn't there, steeped in history. I think you've got a lot of places right on our doorstep here in the UK for somebody who loves history. So it depends on whether they've kind of visited many of these places before. I'm thinking maybe somewhere like Edinburgh would be lovely to go. It's so historic and I'm thinking of places where you see the history all around you. And I suppose that's why I'm thinking of Edinburgh with the castle up on the hill there and maybe if you wanted to go abroad maybe Rome would be a good shout you know you're surrounded by you just walk around Rome and the history there is phenomenal so yeah that could be a good vibe um, the best place for a luxury 50th birthday couples trip 
I think for a 50th, I think you'd, well, have a look at my Monaco vlogs. If you haven't been there, I feel like if you wanted to stay in one of the luxury hotels that I have booked many times in March, because they are a lot more reasonable then, you could have a really nice time. And I think, yeah, go in March. And if you get the Hermitage, which I've vlogged loads of times before, that's one of my recommendations because from the Hermitage or the Hermitage, <laughs> you do have the access to the stunning Ferme Spa where you can relax in their saltwater pool. You can go out and sunbathe on the sun deck there that overlooks the yachts in the marina. And it is a very luxury experience and the hotel is luxury. I've noticed on, I book it on BA holidays and I think they might have stopped doing breakfast in their deal so have a look but if you go in march time i don't know when um this trip is planned for it's significantly cheaper if you go off season but for a luxury trip i would highly recommend that and if you wanted to have a bit of a thrill you can get the helicopter from nice airport over to monaco and have a fab time so enjoy that or enjoy wherever you do end up going let me know and um, a place to go for my fiance's 30th birthday oh fiance as well hmm for a 30th hmm i'm thinking it'd be fun to go somewhere with a bit of action <laughs> i don't know why i'm saying that um I guess I'm just going from the different age groups and thinking for a 30th, what would you want to do? And I'm thinking, where have I been recently that could be a good vibe for that? Maybe some of the suggestions I've actually said already, I think would be suitable, to be honest, for a 30th, a 40th, a 50th, a 60th, or a 70th, or an 80th, or a 90th, or a 100th. So to be honest with you, um, maybe one of my suggestions already 30th birthday i feel like you need to help me out in the comments with this one guys i think italy would be really nice i think a lot of spain would be really nice actually for a 30th maybe you fancy going maybe come down here somewhere maybe you fancy going to Tenerife or Lanzarote for a 30th. I feel like you'd have quite a nice mix of going out for nice meals by the beach and you could go for a bit of party if you wanted to. Actually, do you know what? I should have said this. I think go to Ibiza. <laughs> I think go to Ibiza. I've been there many times and depending on your fiance's vibe, you could go and stay somewhere where it's a bit busier if you want a bit of the party for a 30th or you could go a bit more off season, which is what I've typically done. And I've vlogged it loads as well. I have been some bonkers all inclusives there where I've ended up, actually, no, I'm not gonna talk about it. <laughs> it's all in the vlogs. Watch the Ibiza vlogs um, if you want to see what I've ended up doing on all inclusives in Ibiza. But yeah, I think that would be perfect for a 30th. Sunshine, beautiful sunsets nice meals you've got the clubbing and a big party if you wanted it and then nice days out or day trips to the beach or a bit of hiking if you're into that sort of thing as well so yeah i think it would be ibiza for me um and somebody has said where is that the end yet yeah, where is the best place to eat oh my goodness that is impossible to answer where is the best place to eat? My goodness me. Well, I do love the food in Italy. Um, is that the best? I think different countries are the best for different types of foods, aren't they? So it's a very difficult one, that. It depends what your favourite food is, I guess. I love on holiday to eat seafood and I also love to eat pizza and pasta Say hi to the um, neighbour. <laughs> There's little bungalows here. They're kind of like, they're semi-detached bungalows. You'll see them on Sunday. And the vibe is quite, I feel like I'm in Kath and Kim in my little semi-detached bungalow with my Fiat 500 and my morning Cortado, double one. I've got into a right routine here. And I'm wearing a hoodie because 
It is windy today, but I'm actually getting quite hot in the car now because I didn't want to put the air conditioning on and um, blast it so you could hear it. But um, I'm just rambling now. I realised I got a little bit distracted then with the neighbour and neighbours hubby as well as in the car just across there so they're probably thinking what is this guy doing talking to a phone that is propped up on a box underneath the um, windscreen with a lamp on top of it I put a little light up there as well because I wanted you to be able to see the background I thought maybe as I was filming this the sky would become a little bit bluer look at the palm tree back there swaying in the breeze but yeah it is oh actually there is some blue sky peeping through so it might be one of those days where it starts off a little bit overcast, but then you have that beautiful afternoon of blue skies and hot sunshine, and then you can just run down to the beach or head to the pool. But I will be sharing with you everything about this resort where I'm staying to give you some holiday inspo if you're looking to get away in January, maybe next year, or even later this year for a last minute deal. Um, later in January or February. So do stay tuned for that on Sunday and I've got a really fun trip as well. I'll be sharing with you how I've managed to turn this holiday into basically two holidays for 35 euros. So yeah, that is my little hack for this holiday. I'll share that with you on Sunday. So make sure you are subscribed for that so you don't miss that one. And if you do want any more holiday inspo, I have my travel playlist where I've been to all kinds of places from city breaks to all inclusives to cruises and UK places as well of interest and um, places that you can do as day trips from London. And of course, if you are coming to the UK from overseas, then you've got all my London vlogs as well to have a little look at. So yeah, I hope this video gave you a bit of holiday inspo. I know we're in the middle of January and it's very cold and dark and wet in the UK. So hopefully this has got you thinking about summer that won't be too far off. We've got spring around the corner and then maybe some holiday plans and some travel plans for the year ahead. Let me know in the comments where you're going if you have got anything planned or where you've been, if you've got any recommendations and if you can answer any of the questions that I've answered answered in the comments if you have any suggestions for those it would be so nice to hear what those are too and yeah give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed this one a very relaxed one just sitting in the car with you with my coffee um, but yeah I hope you enjoyed it hope it gave you some holiday inspo and I will see you on Sunday for a full look around this place I cannot wait to share this with you I think you're going to really like it and yeah it's a fun vlog coming on Sunday and I've got another vlog while I'm out here as well I've got a little day trip a bit of a um a look around a very pretty town which I think you'll really enjoy too so do stay tuned for those and have a good week rest of your week and I'll see you on Sunday thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon bye